Hi, my name is Ike Ahmed from the University of Toronto. I had the pleasure of giving a talk at the AAO Glaucoma Day. We talked about the evolution of procedures, and my topic was the evolution of MIGS. And in fact, I think actually it's actually more of a revolution of MIGS, because MIGS is a relatively new uh, foray into interventional glaucoma. Uh, I review some of the evidence as far as how MIGS is changing. Now, MIGS really developed for a need to develop a safer intervention. We know that traditional glaucoma surgery is very efficacious, but suffer from serious early and long-term complications. And so MIGS was born with the idea of developing a safer surgical procedure that we can use earlier in disease, addressing adherence, performing the procedure before serious progression occurred, and hopefully prevent preventing that progression from occurring, requiring serious potential surgery. So I think the safety of MIGS, whether it's canal-based, whether it's supracoidal-based, or subconjunctival-based, I think has been shown quite well through numerous studies. Where I think we've been lacking a bit, or where there's been questions about MIGS, has been efficacy. And of course, this is understandable because MIGS really was born on the idea of a safer procedure. I think the pendulum is swinging back as we make efforts into trying to make MIGS more efficacious. Now, how do we make it more efficacious? This, this is a lot of important work being done, again, looking at the different outflow pathways. So in Shem's Canal, we are looking at targeting, understanding the normal anatomy and physiology of the distal outflow system by targeting microstents, placing more than one microstent, using scaffolding microstents as well, as well as using goniotomy cutting techniques to uh, access a larger area of collector channels. These are all ways that we have seen uh, can improve the outcomes. For example, some data that's been recently published showed that the use of multiple eye stents and targeting eye stents to aqueous veins can enhance the reduction of resistance through the outflow system and further eye of lowering beyond one randomly placed eye stent. And I think that's an advantage again where we shift the pendulum more toward efficacy, hitting some lower targets for our patients, combining them with cataract surgery. We see the Hydrus device, which is a scaffolding device fl flowing over three clock hours, accessing a larger area of the canal, further lowering resistance without targeting the need for targeting, again, reaching lower potential target pressures. And I reviewed some data comparing the different procedures, FACO Hydrus versus FACO, showing the advantages uh, with the device compared to FACO emulsification. Switching gears to a new mechanism of action that's in the MIG space, which is the supracoidal stents. The SIPAS procedure, recently uh, approved here in the U.S., essentially uses an adventurous approach to enhance uvascular supracellular outflow. This procedure is a controlled cleft procedure allowing for aqueous to reach the supracellular space. We've seen from recent results that the pressure lowering again is fairly reasonable combined with cataract surgery. We have now tried to further expand that idea by using viscoelastics to expand the visco space around the device in the supracellular space. We've shown that a larger supracellular lake results in typically lower IOP. So by using viscoelastics to supplement the flow early on at least, we find that that lake is better preserved and results in potentially lower IOPs, and I share some data on that from our early pilot studies. Finally, subconjunctival stents access a very known external filtration pathway of subconjunctival bleb formation. And the Zen implant, uh, again recently acquired by Allergan, provides an, a communication from the anterior chamber to the subcon space, and this provides fairly potent IP lowering. In fact, I call this MIGS Plus because as opposed to the internal mixed procedures, which again have a very high safety profile and have modest to potentially higher IP lowering depending on the evolution of MIGS as we talked about, these procedures have fairly potent IP lowering from the get-go, albeit of course with the creation of a bleb and there is some post-operative management, although we do find it less than we typically see with standard blebs. And the ability of this device to lower pressures, I think again, has swung the pendulum again back toward efficacy while still maintaining many of the hallmarks of safety of MIGS. And then finally, although the in-focus device is not technically a mixed procedure, it does require the opening of conjunctiva and tenons. Uh, the ability to control flow, uh, re reducing or pretty well eliminating hypotony, very much like the Zen, uh, again allows for a very uh, well-controlled outflow pathway in the subconscious space, very well-tolerated blebs with potentially pressure lowering that again approaches TRABS. So I shared a lot of different ideas about how MIGS, again, I think there's a little, little debate about the safety, there's a little debate about its ability to combine it with FACO, but as we move forward, thinking about more, uh, you know, lower pressure targets, using it as a standalone procedure, meaning without FACO as well, we need to be squeezing a bit more efficacy. And the pendulum is really swinging over, thanks to some really cool advances in glaucoma surgical techniques and basic science understanding to attain more efficacy. So that's what I was sharing uh, at the Glaucoma Day, showing how the revolution of MIGS is turning, in a bit, in turning into a bit of the evolution of MIGS to attain more efficacy and really expanding the indications for MIGS in utilization, both standalone and combined cataract surgery. Thank you very much. Ike Ahmed from Toronto. And next time, be there.